Hello my dear friends, welcome to the Java programming playlist. In the previous video, we have seen the concept of threads and we have also said that there are two ways of implementing a thread in Java program. First is extending the thread class and second is implementing the runnable interface. In this video, we are going to see thread implementation using runnable interface in Java programming. So let us first introduce what are the steps of creating a thread using the runnable interface. First is we have to create a class and implement the runnable interface using the implements keyword. Now since the runnable is an interface we have to first implement it while in the thread class we have extended the thread class to make our own thread and we are writing the code inside that thread what we want to get executed in parallel. But here since it is an interface we have to first implement it into a class. Then we have to override the run method inside the implemented class just like that we have done in the thread class. We have to override the run method. Create an object of implemented class in the main method instantiate the extended class and pass the object of the thread constructor. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to instantiate the extended class. The class that we have implemented the runnable interface. We have to create an object in the main method, instantiate it and pass the object to the thread constructor. Then call the start method on the thread. Start will call the run method. Just as that we have done for the thread class. Using the thread class object we are calling uh, start method. Here also we will call the start method. But with the object of the class that is created using implementing the runnable interface. It will get more clear when we will see the example. So here is the example. We are creating a class T1 that implements the runnable interface. In that we have to override the run method that is public void run. Here we have writing system.out.println and thread is running. Now we are having this public class runnable demo. This class will contain the public static void main. So here this T1 is actually a runnable object so that we can run in parallel. So what we will do is we will pass that ob uh, object of that class T1 to the thread to run in parallel. So that is done here. So T1 obj1 equal to new T1. So we have created the object of implemented class. Okay, so the class T1 which we have implemented runnable interface we have created an object obj1. Now this thread T is equal to new thread obj1. So what we have done is we have created an object of class thread. In that we have given the object of runnable interface. Then it is printed system.out.println main is running and t dot start. So the point here is when we call this t dot start where t is the object of thread class it will call the run method that we have seen in the previous video. But since we have not extended thread class where it will get the body of run. So body of run is written here in the t1 which implemented the runnable interface. So thread will take run from this and it will create a parallel thread to be executed along with the main. So what is the output of this? So output of this will be it will print main is running and thread is running. Okay, it is printing main is running and thread is running. That means that t dot start is actually calling the run method and then this thread is running is printed. Now let us see a sample code for this. So here is the sample code that we have seen in the previous slide. 
where we have this run method then we have this object obj1 of class t1 which is implemented runnable so this can be executed in parallel it is now passed as an argument to the thread class and then we are writing this so class t1 is implementing the runnable interface overriding the run method is done inside the class t1 class here in the main method obj1 an object of t1 class is created that we have set step number 3 then step number 4 is the constructor of the thread class accepts the runnable interface as an argument so obj1 is passed to the constructor of the thread class that is step number 4 so thread class is having this object t it is now obj1 is passed to this so we get the run method from obj1 for this t and finally the start method is called so when we call the start method it will look for run method run is available in obj1 and that will get executed so the start method is called on the thread that will call the run method internally and the threads execution will begin let us see what is the thread life cycle so there are certain stages of thread life cycle first is when a new thread is created so when we write thread t1 equal to new thread that means a new thread is created so here obj1 is the reference of the object from where it will look for the run method and then we call t1 dot start now when t1 dot start is called it will see if it is a runnable obviously thread class is runnable but the run method where it is available is it runnable so it will thread picks up the thread scheduler in the run method and then it goes into the running stage so first is new that is a new instance of the thread is created which is not yet started by calling the start method it is just creating a new thread in this state the thread is also known as the bond thread then it goes to the runnable after invocation of start and before it is selected to run by the scheduler so it is into the runnable state before it is actually running okay so the start is called but it is not running right now then it will call the run method start will internally call the run method so thread picked up by the thread scheduler and it is now into the running state after the thread scheduler has selected it for execution now if there is some blocking call like some io is expected or sleep method is called or a wait method is called then it goes to a non runnable state here the thread is alive but it is not eligible to run so if it is waiting for some io then it will wait for the io now once the io has occurred so let's say if it is waiting for some input from the user then it will wait for that input and then once the input is available it will go back to the runnable state and then runnable it will go to the running and then so on it continues but after the uh, execution is completed it will go to the terminated state that means the run method has exited so once the execution is complete it has to exit the run method in a proper way that will tell the system that the execution of run is complete i hope it is very much clear my dear friends that these are the stages of thread life cycle so we have seen two ways of implementing thread first is extending the thread class that we have seen in the previous video and in this video we have seen implementation of thread using the runnable interface thank you for watching this video stay tuned for more videos on java programming on the channel engineering panda thank you my dear friends